Welcome back. Today I am working on Max. Or he's a ragdoll cat. And the first of all, the perspective on the floor looks really weird because the camera is at an angle to my canvas. I showed you the painting, the full painting, uh, in the very first of the video, and you can see the proper orientation, but this is I have to put the camera to the side of my easel or my palette um, because if I put it right behind me and the image was straight, then you couldn't see what I was painting. I am working, I'm blocking in his body, and these are mixtures of my mud, which is two parts of alizarin crimson, and one part of, or, excuse me, let me start over. I'm hand mouth, my mouth brain coordination isn't working. Okay, it's two parts of ultramarine blue to one part of alizarin crimson. And Max's coloration is more browns and dark browns than the, the markings on Emma and Tina, the two other cats, are more in the gray tones. His, his coat is more brown, so I've added, again, this mixture is my mud, plus cadmium orange, plus white. And so this makes a little warmer tone, and that's one of the reasons I selected to put him in front. It's because that just gives us a, a warmer tone. Their, their colors are cooler, so they're more in the background. And his darker points go, he's kind of like a seal point Siamese cat. They go more toward the deep browns rather than blacks. So I just, using my big brush, this is a, called a bright brush. It's got a square end. I really like these brushes. You've, you've, if you watch my videos, I've talked about it before. But I can use the broad edge to make a cover a large area. Or I can use a corner to get details. And he's got a lighter marking in the browns right here on the back of this. It's almost feathers on the back of that front leg. And he gets, I've got several photographs. My collector was just really wonderful in providing me some really good photographs. And he actually even gets a little bit lighter and a little browner here along his back. I'm going to add a little bit more orange into this mixture and just a touch of ultramarine blue, not much. But this just gives me a little bit warmer. It might be too warm. Might be too, too brown. Yeah, that's the color I want. Okay. Just takes me a little bit to get the right mixture. That I want. Now on the back, his back then this goes not a big difference in color but just a little bit. The background's still wet so I can really get the softness of that fur going into the background. In fact, I even take a smaller brush and I can that's not the one I want. Now this is one of the few brushes I use that is not that square tipped bright brush. This is called a round and this is a number four round and I like the synthetic sable brushes. They just, the bristle brushes are too hard and the bristles kind of splay out so I prefer the I prefer the synthetic sables. They just give me a nice, I just like them. And brushes are different. It's just like everybody holds their brush differently. Uh, so people, you know, different people like different brushes, different artists. As somebody said somewhere along the way, different strokes for different folks. So it, uh, we all just, artists have different preferences. They like different canvases, different mediums. And that's what makes the field of art so wonderful. It's we all different. I mean, we can all look at the same subject and paint it differently. And that's why it's so important for us to share ideas, share tips, because 
we are different. There's no reason to be competitive and, oh, hoard your, you know, information or anything. Good grief. We're all, it's a nation of artists, and we're all in this together, and let's, let's help each other. That's, that's the best part. Okay, now for the white I'm using, now I'm using the same white mixture that I've used on the, on the girls. This is, this is my, uh, this is a mixture of my white plus a little bit of the mud. Right now I'm just blocking in his, his coat. I'll come back and put more detail in it. Now this comes into shadow a little bit in here. And this is even a mixture of white plus ultramarine blue. Comes down. We just want to get the feeling of that soft fur on his coat. And it comes up here, it's going to catch the light. Again, I still have a lot more to work to do on this. This is just blocking in my basic colors and tones. Oops, that's too light. You can see I can hold that brush sideways and get get almost the feeling of the individual hair. The floor again, that's still a little wet too, so I can just pull that in there. And he this floor is shiny so we even get a little reflection down into the floor from him. Want to make this a little bit darker underneath. We're, we're back in the shadow down here so this is this white is a little bit darker. And his hip, he'll have some lighter, where the light's hitting it, this will be a little bit lighter up here. Again, I, I just want to block in my basic colors and values, and then I'll come back and do more work later. I love his markings. He just, that's really pretty. And his tail is almost, it's this real dark, dark. The lighter comes into the darker. It just becomes dark. Has a lighter and then he comes in starts getting the their tails are really fluffy my girls are short hair so it's it's aw it's I really have to study how their hair does because in a long-haired cat it's goes a little bit differently than it does in my short hairs. And again, I'll come back and do more work on this, but it's getting blocked in. I'm even going to take, I've saved my floor color, and my floor color is mixtures of my mud plus cadmium orange plus white. Got a lot more cadmium orange than the, what the mixture I used for his coat. Again, this, I can just come back and bring some of this color in. I'm going to right now, even now, kind of bring some strokes down with the 
while this is still wet. Those hairs get little loose, little loose strokes out there. Little loose hairs. In fact, we'll even have some Going to concentrate on his shoulder. Let me bring a little bit more dark in here. That rattling you hear is my, I have my tissue suspended from my, the table that holds my palette on a little wire with a S hook and that S hook rattles when I pull off a piece. I'm just going to put a little blue right in here. Kind of bring some coolness where that end of that tail comes around into that dark. Just give the feel of that hair. We'll put a little coolness here. Just kind of rounds the, the tail. right there to define the end of it. Dark comes here. Okay. All right. Give him a little dark. Now let's start on his shoulder. I'm back with my bigger brush. And this, he's got dark in here. Comes over his leg into that lighter. And then this is this kind of goes in there. I'm not going to worry a whole lot about his head right now. I just basically want to get his body blocked in. This side's in shadow, but we want him a little bit lighter than the Tina behind him. When um, Pete and Julie got the kitties, the breeder had named this uh, Max. They'd actually named him Eddie, after Eddie Munster, because of the Widow Peak uh, and configuration of the markings on his face. But they'd always wanted to have a cat named Max, so they said, we're going to name him Max. Which I know how that is. When we got our girls, uh, well, Molly was named Molly, and we kept named Molly, but our other one was named Junebug, which we just could not wrap our heads around that name for cat. And so we ended up naming her Sissy because they're sisters, and she was the little sister. Well, come to find out, she is definitely a sissy. That Our little sissy is a A number one scaredy cat, so the name sissy fits her perfectly. Anybody comes to the house, I mean, she is gone. She loves to sit on the, I have an ottoman by the, the front door and the, the window there, and I know when somebody's coming because She's just, all of a sudden, I see this black flash just disappear into the back of the house. She is gone. She does not like company, strangers. He's got a little bit of that lighter brown just coming up just right there. And then the rest is white. I can let these colors kind of pull into each other and then I will come back later and bring that, let some strokes of that white hair come over the brown. Kind of like I did on, here on Tina. His shadow, he's casting a shadow on Tina 
and then so I did the dark and then I came back over it with the white. Now I keep cleaning my brush because my brush picks up that brown and so I clean my brush to, so I want to get a nice crisp white in there. So we just want to make this a little bit lighter. So this is my pure white. It doesn't end up being pure white because it's over that darker color and I let some of that darker color come through. And I don't want this to be, I want a little shadow here because that will accentuate the white on his lower lip, or chin, I guess is really the term that I should use. Just want to get him covered and get my light and shadow patterns established. So now we'll start his leg here. And I don't want a lot of detail on their legs and their paws because we want the detail to be on their heads and detail draws your eye. So we want the attention to be on the kitties' faces, not on their feet, not on their hands and feet. Jack always used to call their paws their, their hands. So I don't want his hand to be real detailed. I'll come back and add a little more to it. But. I'll give him a little more definition than that, but not a whole lot. Gonna be a little bit darker here. He, his chest and hair here might give a shadow here. Getting him blocked in. Like I say, there's more work to do, but this is basically getting him blocked in. I'm getting my values established, my dark and his markings pattern established, and then I'll come back and add, add more detail. But one thing that's always fun to do is do these little hairs along there. Along here, they always like kind of flip up a little bit and flip out. They're always fun to do. So there's our, Max is blocked in. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel and you'll get a, an email every time that I publish a new video. I also have a blog where I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. The link is in the description below so you can follow the entire process of this painting. And the address is also on the final frame of my video. So thank you again, and you just have a wonderful, wonderful day.